Welcome back AP Calc AP students and here we are with examples 4 and 5 from topic 610. So this will be the final video that covers our most difficult integration processes that we see all throughout AB. Now it's probably not the best decision on my part to entitle this video with the heading integration that requires underhanded tricks tricky integrals because that sounds that sounds pretty bad right before we even start it's like oh my gosh i've got everybody who's watching this video turned off remember what i said before in a previous video whenever you see a trick in calculus or mathematics in general you tend to have to be open-minded about it because if that's a trick that's used two or three or four times it then stops becoming a trick and starts becoming a tool that you can rely on and use so we're going to see a couple of these underhanded tricks maybe soon to be tools but i don't think that you're going to have to spend a lot of time worrying about these in terms of how often that they're going to appear on the ap exam because we're going to talk about that so let's take a look at our most underhanded diabolical evil okay i'll stop right there challenging integrals from AB. Final integration technique sounds a bit strange. Integrating by adding zero to the numerator is the title. Well, how does adding zero to the numerator help us find an antiderivative? Well, while it may be viewed as a bit of a trick, this method provides, like I said, an easy way to transform the integrand into something that's more manageable, and therefore something that we can integrate. So the title of example four specifically is adding and subtracting e to the x. Well, why does that work? Well, look at our integrand. Integration of 1 over e to the x plus 1. Well, hopefully you take a good look at this and you notice right from the very beginning that there's just nothing at all that you can do to this. No integration rule that we have discussed through the first nine topics of unit 6 is going to apply here. You can't do u substitution because there's no u, uh, or there's no e to the x term or something similar in the numerator. It's not an inverse trig like inverse tangent because this e to the x isn't squared. And Even if it was, the, you'd still have to have some more stuff in that numerator before you could pull that off. You can't do long division because, well, there's just a one on top. So we really are out of options with this. But the way that we want to think about this is, hmm, as I said before, if there was an e to the x on top, we probably could figure out how to do this. Because if the u was the entire denominator, e to the x plus 1, the derivative of that would match the e to the x that we would have up here. But we can't just go around multiplying the top by e to the x and multiplying the bottom by e to the x, because that's going to give us a completely different denominator. Instead, let's think about it this way. What if the numerator were to have added e to the x? Okay, so let's think about that. 1 plus e to the x in the numerator over e to the x plus 1. Well, that's not bad, right? That's just simply 1. We could integrate that. But wait a minute, we can't go around adding e to the x unless we immediately subtract e to the x. And that is the trick, my friends. It's the basic adding of zero that's going to open the door for this problem to be solved. So what happens is that we will bust this integral apart. I'll even write the e to the x plus 1 in that order on top over the e to the x plus 1 in the bottom. And this minus will then jump in, and then I have an e to the x on top over an e to the x plus 1 on bottom. And now you have an integral that you can handle. As I said before, this is all basically equivalent to 1. Go ahead and reduce that down to 1. You don't necessarily have to rewrite it if you don't want to. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it just for the purpose of the video. So this is what you're trying to tackle now. That's not as bad, because we know that the antiderivative, the integral of 1 with respect to x, is x. And then as far as this guy is concerned, let's go ahead and write this out. I don't want to lose anybody here, but it's just going to be one of our uh, typical 1 over u forms. It's a situation where if you let u be the denominator, his derivative will match the numerator 
perfectly. You don't even have to offset with a constant. So this just becomes integration of 1 over u. I'll write that again just so I don't lose anybody. But we all know that the integration of 1 over u at this point is the natural log of the absolute value of u. And then you can make the decision, do you want to live life on the wild side? Hey, sometimes we do, right? e to the x plus 1 is our u. I don't see any scenario where that's going to be a negative number. No matter what the value of x is, if you take e 2.7 and raise it to a power, you're always going to get a positive. And of course, adding 1 is not going to change that. And that, folks, is the answer to this definite inter indefinite integral. Once again, you can always check these with the CAS calculator. Uh, if you're really super motivated, you could even take this derivative by hand and simplify getting a common denominator, and it would result right back into that integrand. Let's take a look at our final problem. One more dealing with this underhanded trick, and let's see what we've got. It says adding and subtracting a constant. Well, that's really not that much different than what we just did. We, we basically added an e to the x, subtracted an e to the x. In this problem, we're going to be adding and subtracting a constant. Let's see if you guys can figure out what that constant is. So we first of all, we look at the problem. We know we're going to have this fraction. And we start thinking, OK, what techniques can we use? Uh, hey, it's a fraction, long division. Nope, long division doesn't work because the degree of the numerator is smaller than the denominator. No dividing is going to happen there. If you start thinking about u substitution, which is not a bad place to go, typically we would let u be the contents of the denominator. But notice that derivative is, is going to give us 2x minus 2. Darn, don't you wish that the numerator was 2x minus 2 instead of 2x minus 1? our lives would be so much easier. Well, let's make it happen. What we're going to do is we're going to just simply subtract 1 and then immediately add 1 to that numerator. Now, I'm going to take a leap of faith here because I want to make sure then, if that's the case, what about this 1 over this trinomial? Is that going to be an integration that we can handle? Well, if you watch the last video over examples 2 and 3, and remember a little bit about completing the square, we're going to be able to handle that. So here's what we've got then. When we rewrite this, we're going to have 2x minus 2 over x squared minus 2x plus 3. Let's write that x a little bit better. OK, and we'll, we'll just do this. We'll make that a separate integral with the sum add the integration of 1 over x squared minus 2x plus 3. The bad thing about these problems, as you probably are going to find out, is that they kind of force you to have to now solve two integration problems. It's a very underhanded thing for a teacher to do, to give their student one problem in the homework that they know darn well is going to result in doing two. But fortunately, your assignments aren't very long when you move into heavier integration techniques. So for the first integral, let u be the denominator. That means that the numerator hopefully will match our derivative. We're going to find out here 2x minus 2 yes indeed it's a perfect match you don't have to offset with anything now if it wasn't a perfect match and off by just a constant we know what to do flip upside down so basically this is just going to be the integration of 1 over u du and then the actual answer is the natural log of the absolute value of that u. And I'll tell you what, I don't want to take any chances, you guys. Maybe, maybe there's an x out there in this world that could produce a negative result. I don't really want to waste my time determining if that's true or not. We, we, we have the ability. We have the math know-how. But I'm just going to put the absolute values just to play it safe and conservative there. Now, let's move over to the second problem. In this particular problem, we hopefully see that completing the square is going to be our method. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our x squared term, look at it closely, see if it has a 1 coefficient in front, and it does. So we can take our 
linear coefficient, also known as our first amigo, cut him in half and square him, and then a plus one is going to be added right after that linear term. And then at some point, you're going to want to subtract it. Doesn't matter what order you wrote the three and the minus one, to be honest, because they're going to combine here in just a second. So basically, we end up with one over this highlighted trinomial. We'll always factor into a binomial squared. And as we said before, if you have a hard time figuring out what is the components of that factoring, you always use your second amigo, minus one in this case. And then three minus one is two. And we are all set to go. You would need to recognize this as an arctangent form. We know here that the u squared is just x minus 1 squared. The a squared is 2. So that forces u to be x minus 1. And a is going to be the square root of 2. And of course, the derivative of the u is just 1, so du and dx are interchangeable. At this point, the only thing left to do is to write the answer. Remember, arctan does have the 1 over a in front, so we're going to start this off with 1 over the square root of 2, and then we follow it up with our arctan u over a. u is x minus 1, the a is the square root of 2, and don't forget your plus C. And that takes care of this example five and takes care of really the two most kind of underhanded integral tricks that you're going to see in BC, the typical add a value, subtract a value. Now I promised you would talk a little bit about this. I don't foresee this being a big issue on the advanced placement test. Now, if you're a student at Avon High School, you still need to worry about it in terms of getting ready for quizzes and exams because we'll, we'll give you a very light version of this uh, on the unit exam, maybe one of these. Uh, but on the AP exam, they typically tend to stay away from these kinds of tricks because it would bother most of the students across the country. And they, Maybe sometimes a uh, test development committee might think that this problem is a little bit unfair. And let's be honest, there's some teachers watching this that might think it's unfair because I've, I've seen several teachers, me included, that can be tricked by these problems. But it's nice to be exposed to all the different strategies that one can take when you're taking a look at a pretty nasty integration problem. Wraps up 6.10. We're so glad you stopped by. We always want you to tune into all of the videos that we have coming up for you and just keep studying, keep working, keep practicing because you will get better. Thanks for joining.